trail, the White House aide showing support for House Intelligence Committee Chair Devin Nunes next month in the state of California. The congressman is running for re-election against Democrat Andrew Jantz. Also this, Mitch McConnell confident that a blue wave will not be coming during this year's midterms. The Senate Majority Leader pointing out to the Hill that major accomplishments under the president's leadership, saying in part, quote, conveying that to the voters in places that we have Senate races is going to be a big part of being competitive in the midterms. Pete? We'll see. Well, this Memorial Day weekend, we remember those who made the ultimate sacrifice for our country. Travis Mannion is one of those fallen heroes. Travis was killed in April of 2017 by an enemy sniper while saving his wounded teammates in Iraq. The foundation started in his memory works to challenge the living while honoring those fallen heroes like Travis. Here with more Gold Star sister of Travis and president of the Travis Mannion Foundation, Ryan Mannion. Always good to have you. And what an incredible family you guys have and story that you tell. Let's start with that message. It is Memorial Weekend. Remind our audience what this is about and how you hope that they spend this holiday. Yeah, uh, you know, for us, I hope that everybody spends it with family and friends. I hope that everybody has an enjoyable weekend. And, you know, I always say I hope that people understand that they take a few minutes to recognize what Memorial Day signifies mm -hmm. to this country and that we are enjoying ourselves because of the sacrifices that these men and women made. Ryan, tell us again why Travis was so special to you and to so many. Well, he was special to me because he was my brother sure. and, you know, best friend. But Travis said something before leaving for his second deployment to Iraq. And my husband actually asked him why he had to go back. And he said five words, if not me, then who? And those five words have become a, a movement throughout this entire country. And I think it resonates. It resonates not just with the men and women who serve. Uh, they're all examples of this idea of living this ideal, but, but also being able to pass that down to our next generation. Mm. Ryan, you know, the, the foundation for which, in full disclosure, I've participated in a lot of races and, and been a part of, honored to be a part of, has had a uh, character strengthening program. Mm -hmm. Its character does matter. Yeah. Tell us about what you've been able to do with that. Sure. So really what we're trying to do at the foundation is unite communities by strengthening our national character. And we believe that our men and women who serve are the catalyst to make that happen. So we go out all across the country and we train veterans and families of the fallen to deliver character education to our nation's youth. And in that program, let me just get these yep. numbers out. You've, you, last year you worked with some 40,000 youth? Absolutely, 40,000 youth across the country, over 55% of them were at-risk youth. And you know they are, they are the, the catalyst to, to changing uh, the, the character shift in our, in our country. Because you know, your dad has written an amazing book about Travis's life, his best friend who also died. They're now buried next to each other at Arlington National Cemetery. It is an amazing story. You see photos of him though, and he's so full of life. He seems so happy and honored to be serving this country. Mm -hmm. If he were here today, what message do you think he would give our military, those that are in his position where he was, that are serving? I think, you know, when I talk about Brendan and Travis and what they represent, you know, to me, Travis was my brother, Brendan was my friend. Uh, they were best friends. They were amazing individuals. But I also think that they represent this generation of men and women who have stepped up to selflessly serve. And, you know, being able to take their name and use them as an example to represent all of these men and women is the way that we can continue to bridge that divide, to mm -hmm. make sure that people understand the service and the sacrifice of these men and women. One of the things that's so cool about the Travis Manning Foundation is you're going right at the heart of the big issues for our country, but doing it with every individual one at a time. Mm -hmm. So it's the lack of courage and civic virtue and, and, and reminding why our America is a special place. If our schools aren't doing it or other places aren't doing it, you're saying we better, we better train vets and military family members to do it, and that's what you're—that's what you're getting after. Absolutely, and not only that, but they want to do it. Yeah. Uh, our veterans are returning, and they want to continue to give mm -hmm. back. Uh, they're taking off the uniform, but they're not not ready to serve. Totally. They want to continue mm -hmm. serving, and so we want to make sure that we're giving them that opportunity. Well, Ryan, thank you for what your family has done for this nation, and thank you for being here today. Yeah. Absolutely. The website. What's the website again? Uh, TravisManion.org. Travis oh, we'll make sure we have it on our website as yep. well. And your cute nine-year-old daughter over here in the corner. <laughs> Beautiful family. Thanks thank for you. hanging out with us. Thank you for being with us this morning. Thank Thanks so you. much. All right. Well, the Obamas just signed a multi-million dollar deal with Netflix but do you know how they scored that major payday? The new information we're just learning about that deal. 
Plus, controversy has been swirling around the NFL's new anthem policy, but a new poll shows most fans are standing up for the move. Diamond and Silk here to react. You do not want to miss this. All right, we asked you to send in your proud American photos on this Memorial Day weekend, and you are sending them in, so keep them coming. This one is from Lisa of her son, Austin, currently serving in the U.S. Air Force in South Korea. And Chris sends this one of his daughter's school in New York showing its American pride with their annual flag display. Shot. Love it. And uh, Jenny sends this picture of her husband. He's retiring from the Army after 28 years. Wow. Thank you for your service. What a career. Send us these pictures of those, you know, serving always, but especially those you're remembering on this Memorial Day weekend, those who paid the ultimate sacrifice. We just had that great segment with Ryan Mannion. Uh, her brother, Travis, obviously yeah. paid the ultimate sacrifice. That's who we're thinking about today. Keep them coming in. Email friends at foxnews.com with a hashtag Proud America. Yeah, but for now, we want to bring in Diamond and Silk, social media stars, and, of course, Trump supporters. Diamond Silk, always good to have you on the show. Want to get your thoughts off the top here on the, the policy change with uh, the NFL. A new poll is out, and it shows that NFL fans overwhelmingly support the league's policy on the national anthem, that if you are not going to stand for the national anthem, you can go back and you can go sit uh, in, the, in the locker room. Are you surprised by those stats? Well, first of all, I'm very happy that the NFL is standing up for what's right. That's right. You know, and standing up for the veterans, the patriotic fans that's in the stands, that's paying their money to see these players stand for the flag. You know what? This is not about a white thing or a black thing. This is about doing the right thing. Thing. That's right. And when you do the right thing, you stand up, you be patriotic, you stand up for our veterans, you stand up, you stand and you salute the flag in honor of them. You know, because our veterans, they didn't kneel. They didn't kneel. They stood up and fought for our freedom. That's right. So it's time for us to stand up and make sure that we we honor them and we respect them. And imagine what would have happened if they would have kneeled in protest and surrender. If the people that sacrificed their life would have kneeled and surrendered and just said, forget it, you don't deserve any type of freedom. What did these football players do uh, during their off season? Did they do any type of protesting? You stand for the flag or you can kneel in a locker room or in the unemployment well, line. Well, well, well hold on one second, though, ladies. So uh, this is actually branched out to the NBA as well. The coach of the uh, Golden State Warriors, Steve Kerr, said that what you're talking about is actually fake patriotism. What's your reaction? No, it's not fake patriotism. Wait a minute, wait a minute. We live in one of the greatest countries on this earth. That's I'm sorry, right. okay? So so you ha you need to stand for the flag. Yeah. If you don't want to stand for the flag and you don't like the patriotism that goes on in this country and you don't like making millions of dollars, pack your little knapsack and That's go to right. one of these other countries where you don't have freedom, okay? That's, right. That's what you can do. But in this country, you need to stand for the flag or go somewhere like a coward and hide in the locker room. That's right. And if you look at it, whenever you're kneeling on the flag, your message is actually getting lost. If you want to protest something, go protest what's being affected. You keep protesting and standing and marching in the streets is not doing absolutely nothing. People have been protesting and marching for years, and what have, have they gotten? They're still marching and protesting, talking about injustice. We want to uh, 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 climb up the uh, rough side of the mountain and don't realize you've already made it to the top of the mountain. Uh, what all of these other different injustices that's going on in the different neighborhoods and, mm -hmm. and in the black community. If you want to protest, go there and protest what's going on there, not the flag. And not on our time or dime. It, it'll be very interesting to see if this ends the discussion or if it continues as the NFL kicks off next season. But we got to get your take on another issue, something you guys have been front and center on, which is the censoring of conservative content across social media platforms. It has been happening to you, and you've been, you've been very outspoken, even testifying about it. It. Well, it's now, we, we believe it might be happening to the president's son. Donald Trump Jr. posted this on Instagram just recently. He said, if this account, quote, could cause harm and even lead to death, end quote, which is what some of his followers said they were told, we have serious problems. The hashtag shadow ban nonsense and the hysteria are -E, any conservative thought has to stop. He points out that even with an engagement of over 7,000 impressions last week, he added zero new followers. He feels like he's being censored online. Would that surprise you? 
Well, you know what? It's not surprising because it's happening to a lot of conservative voices. It's even happening to the president of the United States. That's right. And it must stop. You know, if we don't get a handle on this here, we're going to have these social media platforms trying to dictate everything to us, telling us what we can and we cannot see. It's time to bring this to a halt. We know that these social media platforms like Facebook and Instagram and Twitter are trying mm -hmm. to win an election for the left, That's and right. it's not going to work. This is clearly censorship. This is suppression of voices. It is not fair. If they're supposed to be a platform for all ideas, mm -hmm. you can't suppress some ideas. You can't yep. deem them as hate, and you can't start. That's offensive. That's, That's right. offensive deeming yep. somebody as hate and making them look like they're going to die if they view some pictures of family, <laughs> of their family. That yeah. is, that's offensive. Yeah. And, and that needs to be brought to the table, and that needs to stop. All right. Well, great points, uh, Diamond Silk. And just for the record, we did reach out for Instagram for comment to get their response. We have not received one as of yet. Thank you for joining us, and we hope you're enjoying your Memorial Day weekend, and clearly you are respecting the sacrifice made by those that paid the ultimate uh, price. Thank, Thank you, you very much, both. Great weekend, no, ladies. Thanks, Thanks for having us. To their point, if it could happen to the President of the United States' son, it can happen to you. Yeah. It can happen to me. It can happen to anybody. Uh, so that's certainly we're not following free speech. That story. Yeah. All right. Some other headlines that I want to get to right now. Tens of thousands of protesters rioting against French President Emmanuel Macron's economic reforms that plan to cut 120,000 public service jobs. The mob of protesters pelting bottles at police in Paris. You can see their officers responding with tear gas. Seven officers injured as they tried to stop people from destroying a bank. At least 43 people have been arrested. And prejudice is deeply rooted in America. That is the message coming from Starbucks, the company releasing a preview of its bias training for staff. Watch. The work will grow to reflect the realities of our abilities, ethnicities, gender identities and expressions, sexual identities, class, language, citizenship, political views, religious affiliations, and more. Starbucks is now closing more than 8,000 stores on Tuesday afternoon to conduct the four-hour training. This is triggered by the arrest of two black men inside a Philadelphia store that happened last month. The coffee giant announcing that it will now allow anybody inside of their stores, whether they are paying, paying customers or not. And a Florida police department going above and beyond surprising a fallen officer's son at his fifth grade graduation. Nine officers from Boynton Beach lining up to support Caleb Crowder on his special day. Watch. Caleb Crowder. <laughs> Caleb's dad, Officer Joe Crowder, worked for the department for 14 years. He died in 2016 after suffering a heart attack. After his death, his colleagues vowing to always be there for Caleb and his family. That is a great photo and a great story. And former President George H.W. Bush spending part of his Memorial Day weekend with veterans, the 41st president attending a pancake breakfast at the American Legion near his summer home in Maine. Bush posting these photos to Twitter saying in part, this weekend we remember and thank all who have given their lives for our great country. What we a forget. patriot he is. We forget and a war hero too. Yeah, he uh, is. His, his what a career he's had. had. For sure. Yeah. Well, Rick woke up this morning <laughs> <He's doing the> <laughs> <laughs> up. That's a head, that was part of the headlines. The, yeah. well, the secret to you, Rick, is sometimes you'll you'll sneak in between six and six thirty. Is that a should I not well, share that? I, you know what? I, I don't even know what to say right now. <laughs> Listen, I've been doing this. I've been on this show for twelve years. Do you know that? Yeah. I know. You know what happens? What? You get it down to a science. You do. You do. And you at do. the sleep matters. You get every last minute of sleep in. Hey, we, we totally get it. I'm a half hour but later than you guys. In those 12 years, have you seen <laughs> hurricane activity this early? Uh, this early? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Not, in fact, I think this is the fifth uh, storm we've had in May in about the last 10 years. So it does happen. Officially, the hurricane season starts June 1st. That's the storm you're talking about right there. It's Alberta. We also have a lot of rain across parts of the Ohio Valley this morning uh, and across parts of Pennsylvania in throughout upstate New York, uh, out across Long Island. So a lot of rain here. In fact, we're seeing a little bit of flooding. But the big story is down here uh, across parts of the Gulf. And this is what we're looking at. Alberto, heavy rain across parts of Florida. And get ready, especially the eastern side right now, uh, big bands of storms moving in just to the Miami area, and we could be looking at some flooding there. We've seen incredible rain this month across much of Florida, and unfortunately this storm uh, is going to bring a big soaking. This is what the kind of the track of the storm looks like. It's going to move to the north, probably move across land somewhere on the Florida peninsula somewhere on Monday. Don't worry that much about that. 
it's going to be a big rain story overall and a lot of flooding for a lot of people. Rick, we need you to stick around because you've been here for 12 years, which means umpteen number of food segments, right? Uh -huh. A couple <laughs> yes. of segments here. True. We're going to have a doctor on that says we can't eat any amount of sausage, bacon, or drink. I, I read that earlier. This scary. Okay. You've got to be on that segment. Scary. Yeah. You're at most at risk. <laughs> yeah, I of know. anyone. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Also, you're, you're coming up right behind you. <laughs> I am, I am, Let's be honest. Thank, thank you, Rick. Yeah, Appreciate you it. Thanks. All right. Well, President Trump hailing a major victory after bringing an American hostage home from Venezuela. We've had 17 prisoners released. We're very proud of that record. Very proud. And we have others coming. Our next guest says this is the direct result of the president's tough foreign policy style. So will the rest of the media give credit where it is deserved? We'll ask. A victory for the Trump administration. Josh Holt, an American who had been held as a prisoner in Venezuela since the summer of 2016, he is back on U.S. soil and even met with President Trump last night. The president praising Holt as the 17th prisoner released under his administration. Here to react, Olympic media manager, managing editor Katie Freights. Katie, good morning. Thanks for being with us so early. Morning, Abby. All right, your response. I mean, as he said yesterday, this is the 17th civilian release, a hostage right. released from another country. More than anything, it shows President Trump. I mean, he's not asking for something in return for the release of these hostages, right? It shows that he's getting a lot better known on the world stage, and, and he's not asking for much. He's not, actually, and we had that anonymous source coming forth, Abby, and saying that there was no quid pro quo. Venezuela didn't get anything from this for releasing Josh Holt. But I do think we, of course, have to get credit to Senators Corker yeah. and Hatch and, of course, staffer Caleb McCary. But I think... This is a reaction from oppressive governments, from dictatorships, from regimes of looking at America's new president and saying, this is not someone who's going to apologize. This is not someone who's going to cow to us. This is a president mm -hmm. who's going to say, give us our American citizens back. And we've had four just in the last month, of course, with North Korea as well. And you can't, Abby, you can't put a value on the families, the friends of these Americans getting their loved ones right. back where they can be in a country that is safe and free and it's just it's so it's so wonderful yeah you saw them reuniting last night in the oval office right. his mom i mean the look on her face seeing her son he's been gone for two years in prison she had no right. idea what he went through none of us will ever fully understand what he's been through but i'm glad that you mentioned orrin hatch and bob corker he, there's orrin hatch right there the senior senator right. of utah his home state because as you mentioned they've been working for a couple of years on this release give us a sense of what goes on behind the scenes for this to ultimately be successful well, I mean, I think there's a lot of it that we're perhaps never going to quite know all the finer workings, but I do know that you have to be dogged. You cannot forget. And that's, I think, what what Orrin Hatch and um, Corker were praising Caleb McCary for, the staffer, that he was dogged. He did not let anyone forget, as I just said about Josh Holt, reminding, pressing, continually working with the government. They met with Maduro. They pressed them constantly, give him back to us. These charges were trumped up that Venezuela was trying to say that he's trying to subvert the government. Of course he wasn't. And then that's what we saw, that he was finally, that Josh Holt was finally released back to us. And actually Venezuela released that statement saying that they were doing this in part because they wanted to keep relations with a stronger, tougher America in a good place. They've been a little frosty right now with expulsion of diplomats. Yeah. And we obviously came out of this on top. Yeah. And the White House making it clear last night in their statement, we, we right. still do not support what the Venezuela government is doing and the way they treat their people. So that was a smart right. move on their part, but still a very powerful moment last night. And we're also happy for the Holt family. Katie, good to have you on this morning. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. Thanks so much. All right, coming up, what does football legend Herschel Walker think of the NFL's new anthem policy? We're going to ask him when he joins us live. That is next hour. Plus, we had a blast yesterday. If you were watching at our barbecue bash here on the plaza, but a new study. Oh, no. A new study says that we should ditch 